Welcome to Lecture 10 on Secondary Metabolites and Plant Defence. This lecture will be separated into two parts. This is part one. This lecture is part of the plant physiology subject, which is a component of both the agricultural and viticultural degrees offered at NMIT. Please refer to the recommended reading from Taze and Zeiger Chapter 13 for complementary information. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. In this lecture, we will begin with an overview of the introduction of secondary metabolites and the roles that they play in plant defence. We will then look at each of the most significant groups of compounds and examine both their structure, function and role. In part one, we will examine the terpenes, phenolic compounds, ligonin, and the large group of flavonoids comp composing of anthocyanins, flavonones and flavanols and isoflavonoids. In the second part of this lecture, we will examine in detail tannins, nitrogen-containing compounds, alkaloids, cyanogenetic glycosides and glycosinolates, and finish with uh, details about non-protein amino acids. It is believed that around 2,000 organisms per day attempt to attack or invade a plant. These include bacteria, viruses, fungi, nematodes, mites, insects, mammals and other herbivorous animals. Plants can't hide or run, they can't move away. Therefore they must adapt mechanisms to protect themselves if they are to survive. One such mechanism is their first line of defence, which is the waxy cuticle. This has two functions. Not only does it retain water, but it provides a passive barrier to some bacteria and fungi. While this first line of defence offers some protection, it is not, not enough to ensure survival. Therefore, plants have embarked on chemical defences. These chemicals are a diverse group of compounds and as a group are referred to as the second three metabolites. These compounds may have other roles. There are some secondary metabolites, for example, such as ligand, which provide structural support, or others such as anthocyanins, which are pigments. Secondary metabolites appear to have no direct function in either plant growth or development. They have no role in photosynthesis, respiration, solute transport, translocation, protein synthesis, nutrient assimilation, or differentiation. They have no role in forming the primary metabolites, which are carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. Secondary metabolites also have a restricted distribution within the plant kingdom. Organic chemists of the 19th and early 20th centuries pioneered studies of secondary metabolites due to their importance in areas of medical drugs, poisons and flavours, etc. Important functions in plants of secondary metabolites include protection against being eaten by herbivores and infection by microbial pathogens. These secondary metabolites serve as attractants in either odour, colour or taste for pollinators and enable seed dispersing animals to be attracted to them. Thirdly, their function as an agent of plant-to-plant -plant communication and plant microbial biosynthesis has been demonstrated. Secondary metabolites have an important relevance to agriculture. The defence compounds that increase fitness of plants may also make them undesirable as food crops. Many crop plants have been artificially selected to produce low levels of these compounds. They can make them more suspect susceptible to insects and diseases. Secondary metabolites are divided into three groups. The terpenes, the phenolics, and finally the nitrogen containing compounds. So let us start with the group of compounds that fall into the category terpenes. Terpenes, also called ter terpenoids, belong to the largest class. 
They are mostly insoluble in water. They are synthesized from the pathway acetyl-CoA or its intermediates. All terpenes derive from the union of five carbon elements. There are a number of categories of terpenes. The monoterpenes, which are two units of five carbon compounds. There are the sesquiterpenes, which are three units or 15 carbon terpenes. There are the diterpenes, which are four units containing five carbon compounds. The triterpenes, which are six units of five carbon compounds. And the tetraterpenes, which are eight units of five carbon compounds. If you have more than um, uh, many five unit carbon compounds, eight or more, these are called the polyterpenes. The following image is a schematic of the biosynthetic pathway of terpene skeleton. But they do quite nicely illustrate the number of levels of five carbon skeletons that you can have. Some terpenes are found to have functions in growth development and may be considered as primary metabolites. Some examples of these include the gibberellins, which are a group of plant hormones that are diterpenes. The brassosteroids are another group of hormones which are, fall into the category of the triterpenes. Sterols are the triterpene derivatives that are essential components of cell membranes. The colours red, orange and yellow are derived from carotenoids and tetraterpenes that function as accessory pigments in photosynthesis. While the hormone ascisic acid, or ABA, is a sesquiterpene. Terpenes are toxins and feeding deterrents to many insects and mammals. For example, the nonoterpenes called the pyroth pyrethroids found in leaves and flowers of chrysanthemum, slow insectile activity. Natural and synthetic pyrethroids used in insecticides. Another example is in conifers, pine and fir, where the monoterpenes are upregulated and accumulate in resin ducts in the needles, twigs and trunks. These compounds are toxic to numerous insects. Many plants contain mixture of volatile mono and sequo sequoterpenes. These are known collectively as the essential oils. For example, peppermint, lemon, basil and sage. Monoterpenes of lemon is a lemonine, while the monoterpene of peppermint is methanthol. The chemical composition of these two examples are demonstrated. As humans, we identify many of these plants by the distinctive essential oils and aromas that we are able to detect. Essential oils have many well-known insect repellent properties. Frequently, they are found in the glandular hairs that serve as advertisements of the toxicity of the plant. The image on the slide shows some of these glandular hairs. Essential oils can be attracted from the plants by distillation and are important in flavouring foods and making perfumes. The non-volatile terpene anti-herbivore compounds include laminoids and triterpenes. These are better known as the bitter substances of citrus fruits. The most powerful is a compound called azadarachin from the neem tree. Feeding deterrent of, to some insects can occur at doses as low as 50 parts per million. Several preparations are now available in the North American and Indian markets. Images of these compounds are shown on the slide and the associated plant they have been extracted from. The phytoelectrosomes, first isolated from the common firm, are a group of plant steroids that have the same structure 
as insect molting hormones. Ingestion by the insects disrupts molting and other processes. Cardinaloids are bitter tasting compounds that are extremely toxic to higher animals. In carefully regulated doses, they slow and strengthen the heartbeat. For example, foxtail or digitalis extracted prescribed to millions of patients for the treatment of heart disease. It can also act as a poison at higher concentrations and kill people. Saphonins are tri terpene compounds named for their soap-like properties. They form a soapy lava when mixed with water. Now let us move on to another group of compounds called the phenolic compounds. They are defined by their structure. They contain a phenyl group and a hydroxyl functional group on an aromatic ring. There are nearly 10,000 phenolic compounds known with various functions. These include defense against herbivores and pathogens, mechanical support, attracting polluters, absorbing harmful UV radiation, reducing growth of nearby plants. Plant phenolics can be synthesized in several ways. The figure on the screen shows some of these ways. For example, a simple phenolic such as ligand is synthesized via the schimic acid pathway where it is then converted into phenylalanine where it is then reduced into schimic acid and then it is cut into two to make simple phenolics. One of the intermediates in the schimic acid pathway is schimic acid. The broad, the broad spectrum herbicide glycophosphate commonly known as Roundup kills plants by blocking a step in this pathway. The pathway is found in plants, fungi and bacteria, but not in animals. Plants cannot synthesize the, arom the ar aromatic amino acids phenylalanine, trypsine and tryptophan. Many phenolics play roles in defense against insects, herbivores and fungi. For example, the furocummings are non-toxic until activated by high energy electron state by light. They can insert into DNA blocking transcription resulting in cell death. They are abundant in the eubelferi such as celery, parsnip, parsnip and parsley. Concentrations can increase by over a hundred times in stressed or diseased plants. The release of secondary compounds from leaves, roots and decaying plant matter, which has an effect on the nearby plants, is known as allopathy. It may increase the plant's access to light, water and nutrients, and thus it has evolutionary fitness. Simple phenolic compounds, such as the phenylpropanoids, frequently have allopathic activity. Of great interest to agriculture, Reductions in crop yields caused by weed or previous crops may be due to allopathy. The development of crop plants genetically engineered to be allopathic to weeds may be an interesting future outcome. Ligand is a complex phenolic and after cellulose it is one of the most abundant substances in plants. The compound itself is a highly branched polymer of three different phenylpropanoids. It is found in cell walls of various cell types, involved in structure and support, for example the xylem. It is deposited mainly in secondary cell walls in contact with cellulose and hemocellulose. Mechanical rigidity of ligands strengthens stems and vascular tissues, allowing upward growth and preventing collapse of xylem under the negative pressures. Ligification also blocks the growth of pathogens, a common response to wounding and reduces digestibility of plants. One group of uh, phenolics are called the flavonoids. They are the largest group of the phenolics. In the flavonoids, there are four main groups, the anthocyanins, flavones, flavanols and isoflavanols. One such industry that many of these compounds are important to 
is the viticulture industry. Flavonoids include a wide range of coloured substances, including the largest group, the anthocyanins. They are responsible for most of the red, pink, purple and blue colours in flowers and fruits. Coloured substances provide visual cues that attract pollinators and seed dispersers. Changing the ring substitute on the anthocyanin can change the colour that is observed. For example, in cyanidin, the 3-end-hydroxyl and 4-end-hydroxyl substitutes produce a purple colour. But if you choose these, if you change these, you can change that purple colour to an orange colour in the pelargondian. The compounds flavones and flavanols are believed to protect plants against harmful UVB radiation. As plants will absorb light at shorter wavelengths in the range of 280 to 320 nanometers. It is believed that excessive or damaging UVB radiation can damage DNA and other molecules resulting in mutations which in some cases can lead to plant death. Flavonoids secreted by the roots may also mediate the interaction of legumes and rhizobia. Suntan lotions have been made from some of these flavonoids. Pollinating insects such as bees, which are critical to some forms of horticulture and agriculture, may respond to flavonoids and flavanols as visual attractant cues. This brings us to the end of part one on the lecture of secondary metabolites and plant defense.